Hey guys, Steve Ramsden here, and this week I'm going to show you how to transform an animal into a human just like you would see in Harry Potter. So in the Harry Potter films, a human will sometimes magically transform into an animal, or an animal into a human. Good examples are when Professor McGonagall transforms into a cat, Professor Lupin becomes a werewolf, and Scab as the Rat transforms into Peter Pettigrew. Now in the films, they will normally be using CGI animals for these transformation shots, because they need to get them to move in a precise way, and they will be using 3D animation to blend or morph the human actor's performance together with the CGI animal. But I'm going to show you how you can get a similar result of the same effect using nothing except a real animal, a green or blue screen, and Adobe After Effects. And if you want to see more fun DIY movie making experiments like this, why not hit that subscribe button. So in order to make it look like an animal is changing into a human, or a human into an animal, we need to film these two elements separately from any kind of background. So for this reason I wanted to shoot both characters against a green screen, so we can remove this and add a clean background later. Now we were just using my cat Alfie for this, and he is not trained to act or appear in front of a camera in any way, so my plan was simply to film the cat first to see what we would get that we could use. This is because it would be easier for me to copy the cat than try and get the cat to copy me. I thought it would also be easier to start with the shot of the cat and have him turn into me rather than the other way round. So we set up a little table for the cat to sit on in front of the green screen at a good height and then tried to get him on there and face the camera without doing too much moving around. Now this was easier said than done and if you're planning to try something similar, just remember to leave a lot of time if you're using a pet that isn't trained. Animals and especially cats cats will tend to do what they want and not what you want, and they will also get bored easily if you try and get them to do the same thing too many times, so don't assume you'll get an Oscar winning performance from them straight away. To help get a result that I would be more likely to be able to use, I increased the shutter speed when filming the cat, meaning that if he moved quickly he would be less blurry, and I also filmed at double the usual frame rate, in the UK that's 50 frames instead of 25. This meant I could slow down the cat's movements by half and get a slower, longer take of whatever he did. In the end, after several takes, we got Alfie to sit still in the same place facing the camera and got a nice moment of him turning his head a little. Now this to me looked like a good moment when the transition could happen, so we decided to make this our first shot and wrapped Alfie and sent him back to his trailer. So now for part two of this effect, we needed our second shot, me playing the human version of Alfie's character. For this we moved the table out of the way and repositioned the green screen slightly, and I tried to copy the rough position the cat had been in. Then I acted the end of the transformation, looked around a little bit as if I'm checking to see if anyone has seen me, and then I just exit the frame. Thirdly, we just needed a clean background to put behind both figures, and the good thing about this effect is that's all you need, you just need those three shots. You need the shot of the animal, the shot of the human, and the shot of the background. And then that was everything filmed, and it was time to fire up Adobe After Effects. Now for the editing part of this tutorial, as usual I'm just going to give a quick overview, but if you want to learn every single process I'm using from scratch in full detail, you can of course check out my After Effects Essentials mini course, and the link to learn more about that is below. So the first thing to do is to line up the two main shots on top of each other and work out when the change should happen and how the two layers will need to be repositioned. Put the cat's shot on the timeline first and then the human's shot on top so that they overlap by about one or two seconds. Then with the human's opacity turned down to 50%, now you can see both takes at the same time, and the next trick is to line up the two takes on top of each other by adding some keyframes to the position, scale and rotation controls, and start shuffling them around. If you zoom in far enough, the best thing to try and line up is the dot of light reflected in the eye. And if the eyes line up, then you probably won't notice so much if other things don't, because that is what most people will be looking at. If it's easier, you can parent one layer to the other. I parented the cat's layer to the human layer so that it would stick to it and move in exactly the same way, and that really helped with lining up the two faces on top of each other. Another thing that will probably make the change easier is to actually freeze the frame. In the first shot, you would freeze it at the moment where you want the change to begin, and in the second shot, you would freeze it at the moment where you want it to end. This is because it's easier to line up two stills than two moving videos. 
To freeze the clips where you want, you can right click and choose time remapping. If you select the frame you want to freeze on, you can click to create a keyframe there and then copy and paste that same keyframe a few seconds earlier or later when you want the freeze to end. This will then give you a still image for as long as you want for your change to happen. Now you can go ahead and remove the green screens from both shots using the key light effect. If the edges of the background are still visible, to get rid of these, you can use the pen tool and draw masks around just the parts of the shots that you want to see. And use keyframes to animate the masks to change over time if you need them to. Now you will just see the figures without any edges. And you can of course now add the clean shot of your background at any point if you just want to see what the change would look like with that behind. So now comes the main part of the editing, and that is to add the mesh warp effect to both layers. This is what we're going to use to subtly distort one figure to look like the other one as the fade happens. And this is exactly the same process I use in my aging morph effect and my Doctor Who regeneration effect. So if you're enjoying this, you might want to check those ones out too. Once you've added the mesh warp effect, you can increase the rows and the columns to their maximum and you'll get the most detailed grid, which is usually the most useful. You can now add a keyframe under distortion mesh at the beginning and the end of the section where you want the change to happen. This can match the length of your time remapping freeze frame if you've decided to add one. So first we want to make the cat change into the shape of the human over time. So if we leave the first keyframe as it is, we can go to the end one and begin to distort the cat to make it line up with the shape of the human. And you can do that by pushing and pulling the corners of these squares around. So here you can try things like squashing the ears down to fit the shape of the human head and also making the chin of the cat lower. You also have to stretch the body wider to make it match the human shoulders. So eventually you should have the cat changing into the proportions and the shape of of the human by the end of our freeze frame. And now we can do the same process with the human but in reverse. Set two keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end, and this time we're going to leave the ending one alone and we can distort the beginning of the human to look like the cat. So once again you can shuffle everything around to try and make it match. Here we are shrinking down the human and extending out the hair into the shape of the ears to look like a weird kind of cat silhouette. Now you should check through to see if the layers are lining up the whole way well enough. And if they aren't, you can always add more keyframes and adjust the mesh warp of one layer or the other accordingly until they do. So once you've changed everything on both layers, you can now keyframe the opacity of the human layer, which remember is the one on top, to start at 0% and end up at 100. This will slowly make the cat layer underneath disappear, and as long as you've lined your edges up, it won't be seen at the end because it will be covered completely by the human layer. And you can have a lot of fun pausing right in the middle of the change to see whatever mad hybrid creature you have created. And that's basically how you can do a morph effect between an animal and a human. If you want different areas of the change to happen faster or slower, you can always copy and paste the layer that is appearing and draw masks around different parts. I tried an extra layer on the hair to make that appear faster and also one on the shirt. I also added another layer behind the figure with the cat's tail as I thought it would be fun if we were still seeing that as the cat was changing into the human. I also found a good way to hide anything that doesn't line up too well is to add a new adjustment layer and apply an effect to it such as a blur or the turbulent displace effect. I tried a layer with a little of both and made everything beneath it a little blurry and wobbly and I simply drew a mask around this and feathered the edge a little so that it only applied to the area where the cat's fur changes into the shirt. So now it was time to improve the effect with some finishing touches to make it look a bit more cinematic. First I cut off the side of the room that was visible behind the wall and I dropped in a stock image of a castle wall to look a bit more like something that you'd see in Harry Potter. Next it was time for some colour grading using the Lumetri colour effect which I placed onto an adjustment layer and I applied the day for night look in the creative tab to cool everything down and make it look more like moonlight. This instantly made the scene more dramatic and spooky, and extra shadows of course can also help to hide any dodgy edges or parts of the effect that haven't lined up so well. So if you can't get this looking great, you can always hide more of it in shadow. I now realised that if there was a light source, we should be seeing some dramatic shadows on the wall, which of course didn't have any shadows on it as we filmed it separately. So the easiest way to make shadows that I've found is to copy and paste your layer that has had the green screen removed and then turn the exposure right down using Lumetri Color. 
Now you can add a blur effect and also reduce the opacity a little. This will give you a blurry dark layer that moves in exactly the same way as your object. Again, these can be faded in and out so that one will look like it's changing into the other. And the best thing about creating these fake shadows is that they help convince people that there really is a wall behind the character and not a green screen. So it's all the more surprising when the change happens. I added another layer in the distance, which was a starry sky, and created a camera layer so that I could add a very slight artificial 3D movement to the whole shot. This made the whole thing appear less flat and static because it had, of course, just been filmed on a tripod. Some cinematic black bars and some extra artificial zooming in helped hide the areas of the effect that I didn't really think had worked too well, and this was mainly the bit around the bottom with the cat's paws and the shirt. I say, if in doubt, crop it out. And then it was just some sound design to finish with, and it was time to look back at the finished effect. Well folks, my After Effects Essentials mini course is now live over at DIYMovieMaking.com. It's 30 video lessons to get a complete beginner up and running quickly with the program Adobe After Effects to get results like I do in my VFX work. And it even comes with a downloadable selection of my footage to practice with. Happy movie making and I'll see you next time.